the lead code problem we are going to solve now is called climbing stairs we can see that this one is an easy problem and also a very well like problem the statement is quite straightforward that we are trying to climb a staircase that currently has n steps to reach at the top now each time we have the option to either climb one step at a time or two steps at a, at a time now we need to determine that in how many distinct unique ways we can reach to the top of the staircase so let's try to understand this with an example suppose we are only dealing with just one single step how many distinct ways we can reach to the top well obviously there is just one way we can re reach to the top by taking one step so in this case we need to return one as the answer let's say for the same example instead of one what if we have two steps and now we are trying to reach to the top what are the distinct ways so first is distinct ways take one step and then again one step and second distinct way is to take two steps directly so in this case we need to return two as the answer that these uh, we have two distinct ways to reach to the top same way if we have three distinct uh, three steps uh, how many distinct ways we can reach to the top well we can continue by taking just one step at a time so that is going to be our path number one. Second path we take two steps and then we take one step or third path we take one step and then we take two steps so overall now we have three distinct ways to reach to the top so this is what we need to return as part of the answer now let's try to understand the most common brute force approach to solve this problem well uh, the idea is quite straightforward let's say that we are currently dealing with five different stairs now at any given moment uh, starting from position zero we have two options first option is either we take one step or uh, the option is we take two steps so let's make a decision tree based on that currently we are at step zero what are the options we have we can take one step and reach to step number one or we can take two steps and reach to step number two same way at one we can take one step and reach to step number two or we can reach to two uh, uh, step number three same way we can reach to step number three or we can reach to uh, step number four and over here we can reach to step number four and we can reach to step number five now the moment we reach step number five this is one of the unique paths so we will note this path down and keep on iterating with our uh, possible choices so once again over here we will have two choices four and five and once again we will have here one more choice but now notice that there is a big issue with this one why because at every single position we have two distant different ways to choose from and whatever path we take depending on that we are once again going to be dealing with two more uh, po po positions so in this case the uh, time complexity is actually going to be two to the power of n which is a very expensive time complexity and we will have to find ways to do things smartly so that's where the most beautiful concept of the entire computer science come into the place and that is called dynamic programming now notice over here that we are doing bunch of repeated work for the same amount of thing that we are calculating we are calculating that what are all going to be all the different options from two and same calculation we are doing it over here we are calculating that what are going to be all the different options from three and same thing we are calculating over here so why don't we just memoize or store the information that we have already calculated uh, and use it whenever we need to use it uh, sometime in the future and that is the whole idea of dynamic programming so in order to do that or in order to achieve dynamic programming we will have to understand two things what is going to be the base case scenario or the minimum starting point for us to understand or start building the solution and second one is what is going to be the dynamic programming correlation amongst different parties so first let's understand the base case well base case is quite straightforward let's say that if we are given zero steps how many different ways we can reach to the zero steps so we can only have one distinct way to reach to the zero step because where we are not taking any steps let's say if we are only given one step how many different ways we can reach to the top we only have one way to reach to the top that is by taking one step so these two are going to be our a base case scenario where uh, dp of zero uh, is going to be defined as one and dp of one is also going to be defined as one so now these are the most common entries that are always going to be true and that we can calculate very easily now let's understand that what is going to be the dynamic programming recurrence relationship between uh, or any given two parties so for that let's try to understand the scenario we are currently dealing with these five steps and we are trying to determine how many unique ways we can reach to step number five so the most simplest logic you can think of is that whenever you need to reach to step number five what 
are the ways to reach to step number five well one way is that either we reach to step number four and then take one step or second way is that we either somehow reach to step number three and then take two steps now you must be thinking that there is one more way where we can take one step from step number three and then take one more step to step number four well we already covered this case when we first mentioned that whenever like all the different ways you can reach to step number four and then take one step so overall we only have two unique ways to reach to step number five and that is through step number three and step number four and once we are at either one of these locations we are guaranteed to reach to step number five so all the ways we can reach to step number three are all the unique ways we can reach to step number five same way all the ways we can reach to step number four are all the ways we can reach to step number five and this is going to be some of these two unique ways so this is going to be our recurrence relation why because we are we have the liberty to choose from one or two steps and uh, if we do it like reversely we can just cal calculate that okay uh, we need to calculate all the ways to reach to step number three or step number four and do the sum and that is going to be our recurrence relation based on that we can actually create a mathematical formula that at any given moment dp of i is going to be dp of i minus one plus dp of i minus 2 and based on this equation now we can solve all our problem very easily let's say that now we are trying to solve for the answer n is equal to 6 we already know that this is the formula we are going to use to solve this problem on top of it we already have the first two values being filled out why because dp of 0 1 2 3 4 5 and then this is going to be the value number uh, 6 now for dp of 0 we already know it's 1 and dp of 1 we already know it's 1 so say based on this equation dp of 2 is going to be 1 plus 1 so now we can notice that if we have to reach to uh, step number 2 there are two unique ways to reach to step number 2 and same way has been proven by this equation as well same way for step number 3 the sum is going to be 1 plus 2 so we can do it 3 same way step number four uh, we can do some of these two values so it is going to be five for step number five the sum is going to be five plus three so it is going to be eight and for step number six it's going to be eight plus five so answer is going to be 13 so there are going to be 13 unique ways to reach to step number six and uh, the solution becomes quite easy and simple and notice what we just did is we first establish a base case then we established that what is going to be the relationship and then based on that we kept on populating further and further values so even now if you have to calculate for n is equal to 100 you can do it very easily and very quickly so logic is quite straightforward uh, now we can do one more improvement over here because we are only dealing with two previous values instead of using an entire array to store all the values we can just have two variables previous one and previous two and for every single value we can uh, just resolve these values and keep on updating for a subsequent current values so we'll see this in code that how this can work but basically this is the whole idea and based on this you can solve this problem very easily and very quickly if we see time complexity it is going to be big o of n and for space complexity well if you use a full array it would be big o of n but if you just use couple of variables like this it is going to be big o of one so now let's try to see the coding solution for this one now the coding solution is quite straightforward first we are going to take care of the base cases that if given n is equal to 0 or 1 we can simply return 1 if that is not the case we are going to initialize two variables to keep track of the previous two steps values and the initial values are going to be 1 and 1 for step 0 and step 1 then we are going to iterate over the given loop uh, starting from i is equal to 2 or uh, from the third step all the way up to the n and for any particular current step the number of ways we can climb up to that step is going to be sum of previous two elements so we will add that and then we will simply swap the values between previous two and previous one so previous one is going to become the current value and previous two is going to become the previous one value that we had before and after keep we keep on updating that in the end we can simply return a uh, previous one as the answer and that would be the number total number of ways to reach any particular nth step so let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code beats 100% of all the other solutions which is pretty awesome and that is because this runs in 0 milliseconds but anyways this is a beautiful solution and a good introduction towards the dynamic programming 